children how are you all i'm sure you are having lots of fun at home with your family and i'm sure you're enjoying all the activities given by your teachers right great okay let me ask you a quick question uh, can you tell me why is it that your parents tell you to eat heavy breakfast as compared to other meals during the day they tell you to eat heavy breakfast lunch should be lighter and the dinner should be lightest of all why is that so what is its importance that is because during the day time your body energy levels are at peak at that time your body's ability to digest the food to burn the calories that we get from the food from eating any specific food item is twice as faster as during the other times of the day okay so eating heavy breakfast does not mean that you should eat one specific food item in more and more quantity and completely ignoring the other one it is most important that you balance all the food items in proportion so what is this balancing the food item in proportion means that means your diet should contain different food items a variety of food items which satisfy the required amount of nutrition that you need for your body's growth and development right so what is this essential thing uh, which is which completes your diet is known as nutrition and your nutritional diet contains some essential components there are five components mainly we have discussed carbohydrates proteins fats vitamins and minerals right all of these are required and they are must for a healthy balanced diet right now this was about a balanced nutrition now if i say that you also have to you also need to divide these balanced nutritional food items in proportions right according to age and body each and every one of has a different a unique requirement the amount that we should intake right so when we separate when we divide these food items in proportion in different sections it forms a pyramid that means there are certain food items which you need to consume in higher amount as compared to others but in half in the level so this division that i'm talking about is known as food pyramid so at the bottom of the food pyramid would come your cereals food grains bread pasta these are the ones which you have to consume daily and in higher proportions then comes your next level which is less than bread it should be your fruits and vegetables but fruits and vegetables should be consumed in proportionate amount half fruits half vegetables equal amounts okay then comes your dairy and milk pro milk and other dairy products like milk curd cheese and so on and your non vegetarian food like meat poultry eggs etc okay and then on the top most very small proportion of your diet should contain sugars okay sugars and sweets so this is called food pyramid where you have divided your nutritional diet in proportions okay so what will happen if you will not consume a balanced diet let's say if you are eating less amount of nutrition than your body requires then you will face malnutrition right you will look so thin and lean and in other case when you are taking too much nutrition than your body requires then also it is not good for your health it will lead both uh, scenarios will lead to a condition where your body will not be able to perform or function properly so such a condition where body is not functioning properly due to unbalanced or unhealthy diet which lacks lot of nutrition that's known as disease 
got it so diseases that can be of many kinds but mainly they can be categorized into two number one communicable diseases or infectious diseases and number two your non-communicable diseases or deficiency diseases in short Communicable diseases are the ones which are spread by disease-causing germs, also known as pathogens, disease-carrying carriers, which can be bacteria, viruses, protozoa, fungi, and so on, right? These pathogens will carry the disease germs from one person to another. That is why we call them communicable diseases can be malaria, dysentery, typhoid, pneumonia, influenza, chicken pox and so many. Okay. Then second category is your non-communicable diseases and also known as deficiency diseases. Why deficiency? That is because when your diet is lacking in certain amount of essential nutrients like minerals and vitamins, that your body needs for growth and development then it leads to some diseases like night blindness night blindness where a person is not able to see in the dim light that happens because of deficiency of vitamin a then if you have a problem of bleeding gums and uh, uh, if you have a problem of bleeding gums and swollen joints that uh, causes a disease named scurvy that happens because you are not eating a diet rich in vitamin C okay and there are certain diseases which are caused due to lack of minerals in your diet like iron and iodine lack of iodine will cause a disease called goiter where your neck gland will swell up and lack of iron will also cause a, a weak condition of your body known as anemia you'll become anemic so there are so many diseases caused due to deficiency of essential vitamins and minerals which we have discussed in detail earlier also okay so children you can see that the diseases which are uh, caused due to deficiency of vitamins and minerals how they can recover how can you can recover from them by eating a diet rich uh, in those vitamins and minerals right as simple let's say if a person is having a problem of night blindness then he must eat the food items rich in vitamin a similarly if a person is suffering from scurvy then he can eat he must eat the food rich in vitamin c which is like your citrus fruit right there are so many citrus fruits like orange lemon amla etc now on the other hand there are some communicable diseases which we discussed uh, like typhoid cholera malaria dysentery some of these are spread uh, through air through contact uh, when we come in contact with a sick person or it can be caused due to contaminated food and water like malaria and some of them can be caused by insects ho house flies rat fleas okay so these diseases are communicable that can be spread from one person to another so it is important that you need to prevent these communicable diseases rather than waiting for its cure or waiting for it to be treated okay there are many ways in which you can prevent these diseases from happening or spreading in first place how can you do so very simple as we discussed last time that there are three main things that you have to remember one practice good hygiene like your keep your surroundings clean your house should be airy then uh, there should be proper sunlight because sunlight is a natural disinfectant then uh, if a person is suffering from uh, if a person is suffering from cold cough then you have to ensure that all the articles that he's using they should be properly disinfected and you should not touch the articles being used by a sick person and uh, for uh, 
for, uh, for your food, clean and clean food and clean water, you need to take precautions that your food is covered and cooked properly and fruits and vegetables are washed prior to that. Then your water should be purified, which can be done either by boiling or using the water purifiers that we normally have in our houses, correct? And second thing that you can do is taking care of your vaccination. That is vaccination available for uh, certain diseases like diphtheria, tetanus, polio, uh, meningitis, chicken pox, measles, mumps. So for all these diseases, it is important that you get vaccinated because vaccination gives you, gives your body, uh, helps your body to acquire immunity against disease, these diseases. Okay. So once your body is immune, your body will develop antibodies to fight against these diseases. And last thing that you need to practice is some basic food safety that all your fruits and vegetables should be properly washed, they should be properly cooked, they should not be left raw. And uh, what else? That you need to keep your kitchen surroundings clean and ensure that none of the edible items are anywhere close to poisonous chemicals, especially in the kitchen. All right, kids? So this was all about your uh, food and health. And with this, we complete this chapter. I hope you enjoyed learning about your basic food and health requirement and what kind of nutrients, nutrition is must for a growing kid, especially like you. Okay, so that's all for today, kids. See you next time. Bye-bye.